Right then, I am here in Selfridges VIP room in the back in a place I actually never knew existed for the hands-on exclusive with the Gerard Perrigo Absolute Light Laureato. So here we have the piece in question. And of course, I've worn my very own personal Laureato skeleton in black ceramic as well, which actually goes to serve off the bat bit of a size difference there, which we'll get into. So what exactly are we looking at here? This is GP's latest addition to the Laureato Absolute lineup. The Absolute lineup of the Laureatos is GP's uh, most kind of bold iterations of the Laureato, originally designed in 1975. Now I've banged on about the Laureato line of watches many times on this channel before. I'm personally a huge fan. I've got, I think, four of them now in my personal collection. So I'm a huge, huge fan. There's great history behind the brand, great history behind that particular piece, and there's great history behind that particular model line. So if you're really interested in all things Laureato, go back and check some of my original videos, including the video with this. But for now, we are talking about this, an 18-piece limited edition sapphire-cased skeletonized movement variant of the GP Laureato absolute light so many of you remember there's actually a previous version of this piece it actually came out not so long ago with a different dial now that was limited to more pieces than this variant this is actually the Bukhara special edition variant and you can tell that because the dial on this is blue not only that but the strap is also different on this and this is not just any old rubber strap but some really clever bits and bobs behind this so let's get into it and let's take a look why this watch is so special and I'm so excited to see it. So unlike a lot of the rest of the Laureato lineup, this case is actually a 44 millimeter and it's 11.6 millimeters thick. Combined with the sapphire and titanium construction of the case, this thing has actually got a huge amount of wrist presence. So unlike a lot of sapphire watches, this actually has got a very strange design in that the titanium comes in via the lugs only on either side of the case. The rest of the case construction is pretty much titanium free. All you've got is the movement, the dial, the case and the crown. This allows the skeleton movement to be as visible as possible. Literally almost every single angle you look at this watch, you've got some of that in-house caliber in your eye line. It really is a spectacle to behold and you really do need to come and check one of these out in person. So I don't know whether or not this will be doing exactly how this looks in person justice. Now the main thing that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the skeletonization on this movement, unlike the 2020 version of the Absolute Light Laureato, this has now got blue PVD on the dial to signify the fact that this is the Bukra limited edition to 18 pieces. Moreover, it's not just a case of them putting their original kind of skeleton movement inside a sapphire case, like what I've got on my wrist here. It's not just a case of them recasing this watch and putting the same movement in it. They've had to make up for the structural rigidity issues that would come from putting basically uh, a movement inside a piece of glass and actually completely revolutionize it. The blue PVD part you see in the movement is actually a really important structural element of this watch. It actually holds the whole thing together. The case itself stays true to the original 1975 design and you can actually really pick up that iconic Laureato look from the case at a glance. So something that's really hard to do with sapphire watches is actually keep the traditional shape and be recognizable off the bat. Usually when you make a watch transparent, you really kind of lose the iconic shape a lot of the time of the watch, but not so much in this case. It's an incredibly difficult material to work with and they've worked around this so, so well with some really ingenious ways of keeping the whole thing together and keeping the whole thing solid. There are visible bolt holes in the bezel for the first time ever you see on a Laureator. You don't get that on the standard some sort of steel, gold, ceramic variants, and they are on each corner of the octagon bezel. Despite being a sports piece, and it's not something that personally I would probably swim or do any aggressive activity in, being sapphire, I wouldn't want it to get a whack. Water resistance is down to 30 meters. Now that is probably enough to go swimming in, uh, potentially, as long as you've done the crown up and you're, you're feeling brave. Um, but in terms of diving and whatnot, this isn't a diver's watch. This isn't something you would do uh, vigorous activity anyway. So 30 meters water resistance, whilst it's a little bit below where a normal steel sports piece would be, at least you've got some reassurance that if you drop it in the sink, it'll probably be all right. 
One thing I really like that GP have done with this watch as well, they haven't just put the whole inner skeletonized movement uh, dial part of it in uh, this cobalt blue PVD. They've actually left some of it in gunmetal gray as well. And what that really does is it draws your eyes to some of the main things that you can see there. You can see the mainspring there and the balance wheel. You're really being drawn into that by the blue elements on the dial there. So I really like the fact they've left some of the gunmetal gray that you get on the previous design and they've actually incorporated that really nicely uh, in with the cobalt blue PVD element of it as well. Really, really nice design element that. And I just think it works so well. There's some beautiful details in there, including the very small running seconds right there on the dial. The only thing that can be said for the skeletonization and kind of the legibility side of things, same goes for pretty much any skeleton watch you go for. Legibility does suffer a tiny, tiny bit. At a glance, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to see the rhodium hands on there and they do kind of uh, vanish against the really cool outer track on there. Overall though, I don't think that's really an issue. It's not something that personally I would care about. Indeed, I don't care at all because I've got um, three of these skeletons. I just think they're brilliant. They're amazingly made. The finishing is unbelievable and it's not something that would ever bother me. It just look slightly closer if you do lose the hand on that. But that is something that people moan about. The movement in here then is the GP018001-1652. Skeleton automatic movement. Compared to the dial then, the rear side view of the movement is a little bit more subdued. There's more greys in there, there's polished chamfers, and you've got the cutout rotor on the back there in white gold. Performance wise then, there's a 54 hour power reserve at 28,800 beats per hour, and the brand completes the package with an integrated battleship grey strap in GP's unique FKM rubber alloy material. Basically what we've got here then is a normal rubber strap, although what GP have done really cleverly, and they've done this in their 230 uh, Ti limited edition as well to celebrate their 230th anniversary, they've injected it with titanium. Now you wouldn't necessarily know that from just feeling the strap. It's really, really supple, it's really nice, um, but they have actually injected titanium into it as well. And GP say this should help durability and mean that this watch lasts years to come with its original strap on it. Really, really nice touch on them and very clever to see them putting titanium into a rubber strap. Not only that, but you've got this kind of fabric inlay in the strap, which adds an element of kind of texture and sort of formality to an otherwise very sporty piece. Huge fan of the strap on this. I love a gray strap on a sports piece, particularly a gray rubber strap. So um, hats off to GP on that one. Huge, huge fan of that. Right, let's get on the wrist anyway. And as we do that, then we can really eye out the differences between these two pieces. You will see then I've got my black ceramic uh, skeleton laureate, which I've had for a couple of years now. Absolutely love this piece. And you've got the 44 millimeter, the bigger brother, the more expensive brother there on the right. As you can see what I was saying earlier, they haven't literally just hoiked the movement and chucked it into a different case. It's actually completely different the way the outer track of the dial is made on the sapphire variant and the way the whole movement's put together it is a completely revitalized aesthetic however it is the same movement you've got the same running seconds at 10 o'clock you've got the balance wheel and the mainspring in the same places and you've got obviously your crown on the right hand side as you would expect it to be just housed in a slightly bigger case let's get her on the wrist then because i've got uh, rather famously on the channel, fairly, fairly skinny wrist. How is she on the wrist then? Actually, surprisingly comfortable. I tend to err away now from, you know, your 44 mils a lot of the time with sports pieces, because um, I'm getting into kind of smaller watches, albeit the big pilot I just bought recently, bucks the trend on that. But it does fit surprisingly well. There's no overhang from the lugs, from those kind of titanium um, hooded lugs on the either side of the case there. It's actually surprisingly comfortable. The rubber strap's very supple, the lightness of the case, it all comes together in a really nice package and it just fits so nice. There's a nice curving on those hooded titanium lugs and altogether I'm a very big fan of this piece. Will I be adding it to my collection? The question on everyone's lips probably at this point because I tend to buy everything I see, this watch is priced at £70,000. Let's have a little look. What is it exactly? 70,500 GBP. That is a lot of money. Is it a lot of money for this watch? Probably not. If you look at what other manufacturers are putting out there, you know, in-house skeletonized movements in sapphire cases from a proper Swiss brand, you know, with hundreds of years of history, 
that's not bad. Particularly the fact that you're probably never ever going to see anyone wearing one of these ever again. 18 pieces, most of these will end up in people's collections. They'll never see the light of day. Um, so in terms of exclusivity, and you know, what else could you buy for around 70 grand? A steel three-handed uh, Protect 5711, a 15202 AP, ultra thin and steel. Um, to me, this represents more of an interesting watch. There's more for your money, there's more bang for buck, and it's more of an interesting piece. You know, you're not gonna get anyone rocking around in even the standard absolute light Laureato, let alone this variant. So all in all, a very interesting piece, and I will keep my eye on these over the kind of the long term, because I do want to add one of these to my collection. Maybe I'll ask the guys at GP nicely, see what they can do, but I do love it. I like it a lot more than I thought I would, um, to the point where I'm actually a little bit gutted that I probably will never have one of these. It would be the fifth Laureato in my collection, alongside my three skeletons, my Bamford Ghost, uh, limited edition to 45 variant in white ceramic. So it would be a nice addition. So we'll see, we'll see what happens on this front. But for now, I thought it'd be cool just to run through this piece and actually just go into it and get hands on with it and show you what GP have been up to. And on the topic of what GP have been up to, they've been up to a little bit more than this as well, which you will see very soon as well. So stay tuned to their socials, of course, and stay tuned to my platforms because there is more coming very soon. I, of course, also have the free bridge in my collection as well, which some of you will have seen on my Instagram and me wearing on YouTube videos. I've got the free bridge variant as well. And if you know about the kind of GP's history and the significance of bridges, then you'll know why that is such a special piece. Anyway, I'll leave links to um, GP's website and whatnot to go and have a little look at what they've been up to and um, but for now this is available in Bukhara boutiques only right now as the point this video goes out you can get in touch with the Bukhara boutique and they will get you one of these if there's any left so get in touch with them hoik one of these if you can get one and as always DM me with what you buy people that are buying watches just keep DMing me I love seeing what you're all buying what you're all enjoying your collections do keep it coming I have a little nerdy chat with a load of you in my Instagram DM so do keep those coming for now then thank you very much for watching do subscribe blah 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 from the GP Laureato absolute light thank you very much and I'll see you all very soon bye